He knows he's not allowed to come in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, this Ramona Cafe said that, obviously, I mean, yeah, I work in a swap, so we see everything. And so this dress, it was this strapless sweetheart, giant ball gown, silk organza, and a blush floral print. Like, just the most subtle, beautiful floral. Mm -hmm. And for, like, years, I was obsessed with it. And then when I got engaged, it was like, okay, let's look into that dress, because it wasn't one that we had in the store. Right. So Mackenzie is like, all right, let's find out. So she's doing all this research, trying to figure out, like, what's the style number, you know, how can we get it, what season it's from, how much does it cost, and the only thing, we never found an actual price, the only thing we found was a 10,000 plus. Oh. And she goes, oh, and I was like, no, 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 10,000, like, plus could mean 10,001, plus could mean 15,000, like, and even if it means 10,001, no! Seriously. <laughs> and she just goes, well, you get an employee discount. <laughs> Thanks. I was like, you're a Looney Tune. And then this dress was slated to come into the store, and I was like, it's everything but the floral print and the and the, the size. And so when it came in, I was like pressing it, like, I can't wait to put this on. And then I threw it on and had a moment. Like, no one was even around. I was gonna it was say, like, you alone? Oh. I was with one girl who works the front desk, and she and I were both like, I think this is my dress. She's like, I, know, I think it's your dress too. And then Mackenzie, like, when I was like trying to tell her, this is my dress, she was like, no, it's not. You should get the Ramona in. What's wrong with you? And I was like, no, I'm not spending $10,000 on a dress. No. And if I put a giant petticoat underneath the Martina, it's the, it's the Ramona. For a lot of money. So, anyway, that's the story of my dress. <laughs> <laughs> she was literally like, employee discount. I'm like, oh yeah, my 25% discount is really going to help when it's so a $15,000 dress. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the first so date. Okay. Well, we were both on OkCupid. Um, and... I just saw his pictures and I thought, he looks like such a nice guy, like he just, he didn't look like a player, you know, you know how it is when you're, well maybe you don't know what it's like dating online, but it's not fun most of the time. Anyway, so we, our first date kept getting postponed because he works for Porson Hospital and it was winter and people were like shoveling roofs and falling off and anyway, so we, we got rescheduled like three or four times and it was one of those things where you were like, are we are we ever gonna go on a date? And so it was this ridiculously frigid, like February night that we finally made it. We went to Moxie and I knew right away that he was awesome because despite the fact that it was like 20 below, he stood outside the restaurant to wait for me, like for when I got there. And then um, we sat down, we ordered like a million tapas and he ordered a drink and about five minutes, ten minutes into the date, he's talking, he talks with his hands, it's so cute. And he knocked his drink over and I got just covered and soaked with his drink. And I like didn't even care at that point because I was like, eh, whatever, it's just a little drink, we'll get you a new one and keep going. And I just was soaking wet for the whole entire date and I just didn't care because it was so much fun. No, he said they thought he thought sort of something was like unbelievable, and he was like, "I thought it was over." He said, <laughs> "Like that, like that was like." Yeah, so so then he was, so then you went back home, and then did you reach back out to him to schedule a second date? Or? Oh, we had our second date booked before we left the restaurant that night, and and I was <laughs> I went to work the next day. I don't know if you should put this in the in the film, but um, I went to work the next day, and everyone wants to know how did it go. And I was like, it was so great. And I, I, I told them about the drink being spilled, but that was that was such a non-event to me because everything else was so great. It was just kind of like a funny anecdote, you know. But um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. What no, you, talk, you were talking about how the second date. And you oh, already had it planned. Yeah, we already had it planned. And um, and then one of the things I said to my coworkers is like, guys, I just wanted to kiss his face. I just, I just, I just want to make out with him. He's just so handsome. And then, you know, he walked me in my car and he just gave me a little, you know, like a little peck. And it was like, ugh! But that's the right thing to do. And so he was a perfect gentleman on top of everything else. And then our second date, we made out like crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I'm starting the video. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're going to call it. Make out like crazy is what it was going to be called. Okay, so w was there an if not, but was it like a moment or, or a date or you're like, this might be a little bit more serious than just the regular boyfriend. I mean, for me, there was something different from the moment we went on our first date. And having been on a lot of bad first dates, you know, you, you just kind of know. And at one point, we were probably about two hours into our first date when 
I just stopped whatever I was saying or doing and said, I'm having a really great time. Like, and that's different, you know? This is not how my first dates usually go. And he just looked at me and was like, I know, me too. Like, and we high-fived. <laughs> and like, it was just, it was just so different. And everything, um, everything was so easy. I think that's how you know it's right because it's you don't have to work as much. You click really well. I mean, we went out, that was a Monday night. We went out again that Wednesday and then we went out again on Friday. And this is a cute story. So Friday, we went out to dinner. It was our third date in a week. And he was about to go take a trip to San Diego to visit his, uh, his best friend, Kylie. And so he was, you know, wanting to get in another date before he you know, before he left for the weekend. And so we went out to dinner and the whole time we were going out to dinner, anytime there was like a lull in the conversation or anything, he would say something along the lines of like, we're, we're like dating, like we're, we're dating, you know? And he kept bringing that up. And finally at the very end of the date, I just, he said something like that again. And I just looked at him and said, are you trying to tell me that you want me to be your girlfriend? And he was like, yes. Yes, I want you to be my girlfriend. I want to call you my girlfriend. I've been wanting to say that all night. Like, and so we were exclusive after five days, you know? So it's kind of like, it was, I don't know, sounds silly, but we just knew. And at our first date, things went so well that we both said, I'm just going to put a pause on my online dating profile. I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to see how this goes. And that's how I like to date. I don't like to bounce around from guy to guy and just see how it goes. You know, I'm, I'm not like that. I want to give my attention to one person. And he's the same way. He said, if something feels good, I want to give my effort and attention to that person, see how it goes. And if it doesn't work out, I can always go back on Mesh.com. But if it does, and it did. Just going to say, and it did. And, it did. and now, okay, now got to hear the proposal story. So how did how did how did this actually? Let me just take one take one step forward to over here. But got it here. Yeah, got it. Tell me tell me how that went down. I have to say this is fun. I love talking about Sam. And this and this is something you're gonna have. I know. Forever. I love it. You know? I love it. I love telling these stories. Yeah. All right. I love to tell our proposal story. So, well, it all started on Christmas Day when we were driving to see his brother we were going there for christmas day dinner and everything and on the drive i made a remark about how one of my coworkers always has something exciting to say merry christmas i'm engaged merry christmas i'm pregnant merry christmas i'm buying a house you know it's, there's always something and i said i wonder what her text will be this year and he said oh we're, are you wanting to send a text like that merry christmas i'm engaged like do you want to get engaged and i was like well yeah of course i want to get engaged <laughs> you know <laughs> at this point we hadn't even been dating for a whole year and so we talked about it on the drive there, and um, yeah. Oh, are you good? Do you need anything? No, I'm just. Uh, we're doing a little interview. Oh, for I'm sorry. Video. No, no problem. No worries. <laughs> She's the best too. She's so great. Everyone is so. Awesome. Everyone is so She's awesome. You gotta interview group. Brands. Make okay. sure you interview Brands. Okay, I will. And Melanie, obviously. Gotcha. Okay. Like, gotcha. All right. Cool. Brands so great. So anyway, yeah. So we were driving to see his brother, and the whole thing came up. Like, do you wanna? Do you wanna get engaged? Yep. Yeah, I do. And uh. <laughs> so he, we basically, at th that day, he said, okay, so sometime in 2016, we'll get engaged. And I was like, 2016 is like six days away, you know? So uh, boy, you, you want to give me a more specific time frame? He was like, by the end. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Anyway, so then a couple months later, he took me to the Diamond District in New York, and that's where we picked out the ring. And after we bought it, we spent the day in the city and we were wandering through Washington Square Park and it was just this beautiful picturesque moment of like we walk by the arch and turn the corner and you see a grand piano and a pianist playing Chopin playing a nocturne that I played in college like couldn't have been you couldn't have created a more perfect moment if you tried and we're just walking and he's got the ring in the bag and I'm like this is such a great opportunity he should probably and then we walked by the pianist and I was like, oh, he's not gonna do it, you know? <laughs> so I was like, Duh. So for the next two weeks, I badgered him about when he was gonna give me the ring. Cause you know, he had the ring. I just was like, when am I gonna get it? I, you know, so then Easter Sunday, he came to my house to pick me up. We were gonna go to church and then have Easter Sunday dinner at my parents' house. 
and Easter is my favorite holiday. So um, that morning I thought maybe he'll do it. He knows I love this holiday. So um, he came in, didn't do anything. She said, oh, are you ready to go? I'm like, mm -hmm. no. And then when it was clear he wasn't gonna do it, I was like, why aren't you giving me the ring? You know, and I badgered him and he, be patient, be patient. And then we drove there and it's about a 45 minute drive and about a half an hour into it, I decided I could logic him into engage, you know, getting engaged to me. And I said, you know, I mean, being engaged is agreeing to marry someone. And we've already done that. We've agreed to marry each other. And the ring is nothing more than an outward symbol of that. And so since we've agreed to do it already, you should just give it to me, you know? And he's, meanwhile, it's in his pocket and I had no idea. And I don't know what I was thinking that I could logic someone into getting engaged. Like, come on, you, we've done it. We've already agreed. Just, just put it on my finger, it's good. So, he, you know, he kept it cool. We went to church. The service was unbearably long. Like it was just, I didn't even know why it was so long. Um, but then, so I'm sure he was just like antsy the whole time. I figured it was because he was bored, but it was really because he wanted to get down to business of like doing it. So he had, he had called my mom the day before and said, I want to propose to Renee tomorrow, and how can I do it, and I want you to help. And so they passed the ring off to my stepfather. He brought it upstairs to my old bedroom, and they put it on the dresser, and then uh, they were like, how are we going to get her up there to, to see it? So my mom's like, well, I've been making, been making soap. So I'll tell her she needs to come upstairs and see the soap I've been making. So she did that. I'm downstairs. I'm starting to prep Easter dinner and cook, and... Um, she's like, hey, everybody, come upstairs. I want you to see the soap I've been making. It's my new hobby. It's so great. Come on up. And I'm like, mom, we've got ham to make. Like, what's wrong with you? And she's like, just come on. Just come on up, everybody. And so, you know, the four of us traipse upstairs. I'm like, what's going on, you know? And I blitzed right by the ring. Walked right by it. Walked right over to the soap. Didn't even see the ring. And I'm like, yeah, mm, it smells so good. Good job, mom. You know, like, we should go cook. And... Now I'm standing with my back to the ring and they're all looking at me and thinking, how do we get her to turn around, you know? <laughs> and so Sam just started asking questions. Oh, was this your bed? And was this your dresser? Was this? And he got me to turn around. And that's when I, I was like, no, this isn't, this isn't my dresser. And, and that's when I was like, oh, and I did this massive double take. And I have no recollection of him getting down on one knee, but there's a photograph of him down on one knee putting a ring on my finger. So he did. And now I think all he said was, so will you marry me, baby? Yeah, of course. So that's the long-winded engagement story. <laughs> so even though you knew it was, you knew he had the ring, mm -hmm. like you knew that was, but like that moment seemed so like authentic and still took you mm -hmm. off guard. Still took me off guard because I figured he wouldn't do it publicly. I didn't think he would involve my mom like he did. I'm so glad he did. And he, he did that because he knows my mom and I are so close and that it would mean a lot to have her be able to see it. And... So I thought that was super thoughtful of him to involve her. But I just, I figured if he was going to do it, it would be before we go so that we can get to Easter Sunday and say, look, we're engaged. And, um, but he was way more thoughtful than that. He's awesome. He did good. He did great. All right, so fast forward mm -hmm. to today. Mm -hmm. This is a very unique day. Mm -hmm. Unique. I hope so. Ex explain, explain what today is and what expectations are for your guests coming. Most of our guests think that today is an engagement party. And I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping it a secret. We had to tell a lot of people who were either traveling from far away or um, have really difficult schedules or children or whatever. So there are probably a little under half of them know that when they get here it's a wedding, but they know that that's a surprise. So hopefully no one will spill the beans too early. So hopefully when guests arrive, they'll just start mingling and shortly after everyone's here, then uh, Brants will make an announcement that welcome everybody but this isn't what you think it is and tell everyone what we're really here to do today and I just I hope that everyone is happy and excited about that. Um, there's been a lot of people who have cautioned me like people aren't going to be dressed for a wedding people are going to be caught off guard and you know and I just I think I know my friends and family well enough to know that they're going to appreciate this surprise and not be upset about it. I mean I can't imagine not being happy with a surprise like that. So I'm nervous for the timing of it. I'm nervous that it all goes according to plan. I mean, I see enough brides that I, I'm not deluded enough to, to think that everything will go perfectly, but I hope it goes good enough that 
it's a good experience for everyone. So is there something in particular you're really looking forward to or? I'm looking forward to all of it. I'm nervous for the ceremony. I'm emotional. So hopefully I'll get through that without ruining my makeup. Um, I'm really excited for the singing. I, my whole vision for the reception portion of the day was uh, everyone just gathered around a piano singing show tunes and silly songs and enjoying themselves that way. It's again, not a traditional approach to a reception. We don't have a DJ, we don't have a dance floor. This is different. So I think I'm excited and nervous because I'm excited that if it goes well, everyone will love it. But I'm nervous that maybe people just won't be into singing around a piano, who knows? But fortunately I have people like Brantz who, you know, that's what he does for a living, just entertain. So maybe he can help people feel excited about it and enthusiastic. He will. And then the last question, kind of an overview mm -hmm. kind of question, but and it's loaded, but what is it about Sam that you love so much? Like what, what is it about him? I'm gonna cry. Um, like he, he just, he loves me unconditionally. He, sorry, Matt, that is a loaded question. Um, he just, he makes me feel so loved. And I, I want nothing more than to love him just as much and make sure that he knows that until the day he dies, you know? I love how I feel when I'm with him. I love how he makes me laugh. I love everything about him. Woo, all right, all right, that's it, no more. <laughs> I swear, I just saw, I saw it somewhere. Did you see it? I feel like I saw it. Well, beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. I said, I, I don't, I don't think. My lover stands on golden sand and watches the ships that go sailing. I clean up. I still have a Beyond the sea. See?